Now it's time for Tim's Movie Magic, which is a specially extended edition this week, focusing on the UK's first ever film music festival. The movie music you love, with Tim Burton on Movie Magic. Just across the Irish Sea in Birmingham during mid-July was the first ever film music festival for the UK, appropriately titled The Soundtrack to Your Summer, hosted by the City of Birmingham Symphony Orchestra, an event that was hugely successful and further cements the significance and brilliance of music composed for film. The headline guest for the week was none other than Sir Anthony Hopkins, but we'll chat more about that later on. So we were there for all concerts and events and had exclusive access to some of the organizers, performers and wonderful musicians that brought the festival to life. So let's start at the beginning. Here we go! The soundtrack to your summer. The festival kicked off with a unique discovery at the nearby library in Birmingham city centre of sheet music from early 20th century silent movies, including, believe it or not, music written for none other than Charlie Chaplin, performed authentically at the piano by the charismatic Ben Dawson. Well, I got a phone call from someone upstairs in the office saying, oh, the Birmingham Central Library have just uncovered all this stuff in their move and it looks like it has some stuff that was written for Charlie Chaplin and we'd like you to do a... If you can, go and sift through it and see if you can find anything worth doing in a pre-concert event. So I had about an hour to go before my train back to London. So they took me down into the bowels of Central Library and piles of ageing, yellow, crumbly music. <laughs> and, and said, right, there it is. And that was it, really. It was, I mean, it had been right. vaguely categorised by composer or by publishing house. Um, but it was in it's just a pile of stuff that I just had to sift through in about an hour. What followed later that night was the first of the week's dynamic concerts. 21st Century Soundtracks was the title. This included music from the BAFTA-winning King's Speech, Oscar winners Atonement and Slumdog Millionaire, and the recent Bull by David Arnold. world-class conductor Dirk Brosse chatted with me about some of today's best film music and his joy conducting it in the launch concert. I think you recognise film music uh, as you recognise chamber music, as you recognise classical music. Film music has something, in French we say narrative, uh, n- n- narrative. So there is always a narration, you see. It's playing on the mood of the listener. Because this is the function of film music. It's the function to give one extra emotion when you are watching a screen don't forget that when you watch a screen that almost 80% of your intention is going through the eye. So there is very few, few space actually for the ear mm. or for other, other senses. So um, uh, knowing this, it's very important to, uh, to know that um, the function of the, of the music. So sometimes it is to, to underline, to color the, the, the emotions, but sometimes it has a role of taking over the storyteller, you know, mm. the famous overscoring passages where we, what we all love very, very much. And, uh, and, and there is a tradition, of course. Um, and I, th- I think in the 21st century, nothing really has changed a lot. Everybody is writing in the, in the, in the, old, uh, in the old traditions. 
except for some people that are really bringing new sounds. Uh, for example, uh, the guy uh, Johnny Greenwood, uh, he did something really fantastic. Mm, clever, it's yeah. like a more contemporary music sound, you know. Mm. So it is possible to open up the style and to, to go in, in different directions. <laughs> There have been many excellent jazz-infused film scores over the years, and the second concert in our festival week included just that. The National Youth Jazz Orchestra, or NIJO as they like to be called, features the next generation's players, and led by Mark Armstrong with jazz legend Guy Barker, they perform such classics as Dirty Harry, Bullet, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, and Austin Powers. As it happens, Guy Barker played trumpet on countless film scores and was actually director Anthony Mangella's player of choice. He was, Anthony was so encouraging and the way he directed the musicians on the sessions was interesting, you know. He oh, would, really? Again, okay. he Very would helpful. try... And, there, there was a version at the closing titles um, where we did a version of um, You Don't Know What Love Is, which is actually how I got the gig because he heard an album I did with with strings oh, which was called right. What Love Is and Sting sang You Don't Know What Love Is and the opening track was a piece called The Peacocks by Jimmy Rolls and it was that tune that actually got me the gig but when I went to meet him he said I'd love to have a, t a song a theme going all the way through the film I'd like it to be The Peacocks and then he discovered that the song was written four years after the film was supposed to be set so being oh, the perfectionist sorry. he right. was he okay. said we can't do that and then so that's why you don't know what love is because that was track two hmm. and um, became you hear that throughout the film and we did a version with John Martin at the end but when I was doing a solo I was just playing a solo with a mute in on the closing titles and Anthony just came down and he sat down with me and he just looked at me and he explained exactly what sh what was going through Matt Damon's head at that moment, where he was sitting, why he was alone, you know, how fractured he was completely. Mm. And, and then he just talked to me over until he eventually said, that's how you're supposed to sound. The way he did it was quite amazing because it, it just made me play completely differently. And as I went to hear the playback, Peter King, the alto saxophone player, he was on the session too. He was upstairs in, in the booth listening to the whole thing and I saw him sitting outside just bewildered, just said I've never heard anybody direct a musician and get the emotion out the way he had. He said if every record producer would like that it would be quite amazing. <laughs> the soundtrack's new summer. If you're going to have a film music festival then you can't not feature its finest practitioner. John Williams. The penultimate concert saw Birmingham's beautiful symphony hall resonate with the glorious music of Williams. We were treated to Superman, Indiana Jones, Star Wars, Jaws, and of course, Harry Potter. The conductor of this night was Michael Seal, a very thorough musician that studies the original film soundtrack religiously. Well, I mean, I'm a big believer in the fact that people come to hear a concert such as that, uh, and the whole concert of the music of John Williams. They've come to hear the music they remember in the film, and either to hear the music as they remember it, or to hear the music and be transported back to the film. I don't think, uh, I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm right, that the audience hasn't come to hear Michael Seale's interpretation of Star Wars or of E.T. or of Raiders of the Lost Ark. They've come to hear the music as they remember it. So often I will go back to source, uh, often watching the whole movie, but sometimes just clips or, it, or the original soundtrack CDs. 
But even between the movie and the soundtrack CD, there are tempo differences. Yeah. I prefer to go back to the movie. So, for instance, the end of E.T., the last ten minutes, which is called Adventures on Earth, is actually a lot quicker of a film than it is on any subsequent performances I've ever heard on CD or on this. And even a little thing like, I happened to wander into my lounge the other day and my kids were watching The Prisoner of Azkaban. And the snowball fight was just around the corner and the, you know, we do the snowball, the snowball fight at the end of the first movement of the, of the Azkaban suite. It's much faster than the soundtrack recording. Uh, and it just, it makes a difference, you know. Mm-hmm. You get it off, the, off straight from the movie and it should transport people to where they should be, you know, where they remember the movie. <laughs> What made this week even more special was a sprinkling of classic film screenings. We had Dirty Harry and Bullet to coincide with the Jazz in Film concert. The start of the week, there was The King's Speech. But the highlight was undoubtedly Steven Spielberg's classic Raiders of the Lost Ark, back on the big screen just before the John Williams concert. What could be more appropriate? For many, the best was saved for last. The grand finale of the festival saw the one and only Sir Anthony Hopkins and his very own music share the stage with scores from some of his best-known movies, including Shadowlands, The Silence of the Lambs, and Kenneth Branagh's recent Thor. You're unworthy! Father, I am! And I'll take from you your power! And I cast you out! Hopkins came on stage at the start and at the end of the concert and candidly spoke about his early musical influences and inspirations. It has to be said that being in the presence of such a film legend does leave you a little starstruck. But when that initial feeling wears off and you witness Sir Tony groove to his own music in a playful manner at the side of the stage, the end result is encapsulating and utterly unique. I'm here actually because I never grew up. <laughs> so I'll give you a little something of a sketch. Um, I wasn't really bright at school. I was really backward. I was called backward, slow. So I devised my own world and I heard music very early in my life. And I didn't think there was any significance in it and I don't like to make symbols of significance about anything, especially about acting. But um, so music to me was a strange phenomenon as a little boy. And uh, <laughs> I used to hear sounds of music in my head. My father thought I was a bit touched. But, uh, Here we go! The yeah! soundtrack's in your summer. The festival was a resounding success and there's more being planned in the future. Here's festival advisor and presenter, Tommy Pearson. Well, I, I am a great advocate for modern film music because I, I, and I want to choose the best that we can and show that, that, that you know, all is not lost because there's a, a lot of feeling around that you know, it's not as good as it used to be. But I really do think that with composers like John Powell and Harry Gregson Williams and Danny Elfman, Alan Silvestri, Howard Shaw, yep. you know, all these guys, uh, David Arnold, Rachel Portman, and Dudley, Patrick Doyle. I mean, there's a lot of people out there, very fine musicians producing some really good work. Yep. So that's what I really want to do. I want to show people that exists. On the other hand, I do plan, hopefully, if we do do this next year, I think we should do a you know, Golden Age concert as well. What I'll be really looking for is stuff that not everybody has done before and see if I can find some, some new stuff to do, see, yeah. what we, see what we can find. And maybe do a movie all the way through with the music live underneath it. Right, yes. Because yeah. yeah, yeah. that's another thing I've, I've wanted to do for ages. Yeah, we we'll look forward to seeing some of that. The yeah. soundtrack's in your summer. That was a special extended movie magic. We'll hopefully catch more film music festival action next year. I'm Tim Burden. I'll see you at the movies. Movie magic with Tim Burden, the movie maestro.
Weekend Extra is brought to you by Belfast City Centre Retailers. Make this weekend one to remember. Stay the night in Belfast and let your hair down from £60 hotel breaks. Click go to Belfast.com for what's on in town.